Yeah, let's go. Okay. I'm delighted to show you where all this happened. So come with me. Uh, we're going to go out of the gallery for a moment and I'm taking you to my studio. Uh, John Blood and Elizabeth Danzi designed this and uh, architects from Austin. And they did a beautiful job creating something that is just spectacular. This is my studio and my environment. But I wanna tell you, we named this Fossil Ridge uh, Gallery and Studio and Creative Center because these are fossils. They're literally right down this hill. And so this is built over a fossil ridge. And uh, these are uh, like 80 million year old sea fossils that are right here at our ranch and outside of Burnett, Texas. So come with me. This is the studio. And we're gonna walk out here on the deck, which is quite spectacular because you can see when I bring my easel out here and paint, no, but I can go into the inspiration actually uh, what I see. And so now let's go inside my studio, my sanctuary, actually. It's a, a great place to think, write, create. And uh, right now I have a little work in progress, a small painting on the easel. But this is a wonderful little space. Uh, again, it allows me to position my easel in all different directions so I can, you know, see what's going on outside. And at the same time, um, I love putting my brushes in these wonderful little green containers. And so the greens and all these things are, are part of my look in here. Um, the other thing that is nice about having this space is that the giant windows just provide beautiful natural light. And so it's almost like I'm outside because I am a planner painter, but it's like I'm outside even when I'm in. So this has allowed me to paint through the ice storm, uh, through the, the heavy rains and even high winds because I'm a bit protected from that inside the studio. One thing I'll show you is that before I had my real studio, my paints were all just stacked on a table, but we've done a nice thing to organize them by color. And uh, I have all this organization in my shelves here. So that's a little behind the scenes of how um, I keep things organized here in my paint brushes. Um, also, I wanna show you a little something. Um, I found this arrowhead in South Texas uh, at my husband's family ranch on Christmas Eve one year. And it's a very cherished, piece of this whole place here because it looks like a little Christmas tree, doesn't it? And I found it at the very end of the day on Christmas Eve many years ago. So that's part of, um, kind of part of the lore of my room here. I keep things around me that mean things to me and inspire me. It's important as an artist to, to stay, you know, close to the things that you love. And I do love this ranch. So let's look at one other thing, which is a bit a part of the possible secret of my paintings before we look at those. Um, this is a little washstand for my brushes, but it's also where um, the rainwater comes out to, because I use acrylic. And so I paint only with rainwater. And we realized along the way that there was something important about that. When you paint with water that's been through a city system, there's always chemistry in it. There's chlorine, there's minerals, there's trace other chemistry that's in that water. And I am convinced because my water is absolutely filtered, pure rainwater, again, what's going on right here, that it makes my paints go on more smoothly and they go on like oil. And actually when I did my show in New York, several of the critics came in and said, I think you're painting in oil. This doesn't look like acrylic. And I said, no, it, it's acrylic, but it's gotta be the rainwater. Maybe we think. If it's not, if it's not true, it should be. And that's what J. Frank Doby said. So we're gonna go with it. Now let's go into the gallery, which I love. And I'm so fortunate to have been able to build this before COVID, all this, because it became our sanctuary retreat during this time. Um, but let me kind of give you um, some of the new, new things that are going on. So you're getting to see at least several paintings that have never been seen before. And I'm unveiling them in what I call the Vistas collection. Uh, all my collections have different names and this is the brand new one called Vistas. Um, I love this painting here. It's quite large, uh, four feet by five feet. So it's kind of big for me <laughs> to, to deal with, but uh, it has just an incredible amount of detail in it. Uh, maybe you can see some of it even just kind of the back underpaintings in it make it very rich. Uh, some of the painting is very thick uh, on this one, as well as, you know, some of the thinner strokes. But I named this one Devils in the Details, because as I was painting it, there were just thousands of little brush strokes and details that I was putting in to achieve that just incredible bright, bright 
sunset that I was seeing that also was in, this, in the midst of a thunderhead. So you get this thunderhead light coming from here. And uh, it's, it's truly kind of a magnificent piece and just an incredible number of colors in it. This one was inspired by uh, our blue bonnet season. It's very, very um, abstract in a way, almost a watercolor attempt here, but, but acrylic with an abstract view of the blue bonnet. And I frame this one differently than I do the others because I just wanted this big, big frame to kind of set off the colors in the hill country and, uh, and the sky around it. So this one is a little different than some of the others. Uh, and then as we go along, um, these are a little bit more my traditional style, but they are very subtle. I love these. Uh, they're sunsets and just grabs. It's almost like you take a piece of the sky and not the whole vista, but a piece of the sky and you're just grabbing that one moment that the sun is setting. And so those are, are very nice. This is a diptych also. And um, I enjoy doing diptychs and triptychs. I don't have a triptych in the, in the gallery right now. I just sold a big one, uh, but it goes back to my art history and art training. You know, that was a very popular thing to do back in medieval times, even the triptychs were in churches and in uh, sacred places of uh, the Holy Family and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of hearkening back to my art history, which I had many, many hours of art history um, while I was studying. And so I love diptychs and triptychs. This is another really brand new one. Um, I call it glory hallelujah. It's just woo, a big pop of color, but it also has a little double meaning because I'd gotten my COVID vaccines and I went glory hallelujah. I'm getting through with this. So uh, this one is also very, very intense, bright, almost neon color. Um, this one is called the hint of a strawberry moon and I paint moons we'll see another one in a minute and you can see this very hint of the strawberry moon there actually uh, is something called a strawberry moon every year in our lunar cycle so this one picks up a bit of the sunset as the moon is coming out and uh, this piece is also very beautiful it's another one of my big bright ones brand new ones you can see more of the hill country uh, here with some of the abstract foliage and we love this one so much that we decided to design a scarf out of this. <laughs> so you can see these, we have a few left for sale. I did a limited collection of these and they're really quite beautiful, uh, you know, when you tie them around you. So let's go for a little walk. This is an interesting piece of the studio, of the gallery. This is a movable wall. Uh, if you will look, it's on rollers and I can take this wall all the way to the back all the way to the center, to the side, and we can actually achieve a different look and feel in the gallery based on the placement of this movable wall. It's really quite ingenious uh, the way it was built. Um, now let's just kind of walk down this wonderful little section of the gallery created by the movable wall, and you will see other bright paintings, uh, different kind of more of my abstract pieces. This is a fairly recent one as well which is small and I do paint different sizes. Uh, some of my collectors like small paintings, some need a really large one for a space. And so I paint in different sizes and different types of canvases uh, to create different looks and feel. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. The moon was coming up while the sun was setting. So I, I like to capture kind of the phenomenons of the sky and whatever is going on uh, at any given day. So I, like I said, I never have a, a need for new stimulation because the sky just provides incredible uh, look for me to, to take from color and, and feel. Uh, this is a what I call a silver lining painting because it was painted during COVID, but it was actually a beautiful uh, cloud that was popping out in kind of a gray day. This is a moon. You can see I do paint moons. And this is actually quite a beautiful moon here. It's just very, a little larger um, and it has a lot of detail in the clouds around it. And if you turn around and look behind me, uh, we had an interesting phenomenon also where the Sahara Desert sand blew through uh, this part of the country and left the air just almost this gold color. It was, a, and it was an interesting tone that I was seeing. And I also noticed that the buzzards were flying and gliding in the air. And if all of you see a vulture or a buzzard up close, they're probably one of the most unattractive birds that we see. But once they're in air and once they're gliding, they are absolutely beautiful. And I love to capture them sometimes gliding through the wind currents. And they were doing that on that day. Uh, walking by here, you'll see some of my rain paintings because rain is important to us. Rain brings life. 
And when you're hay farmers like we are and we're ranchers, uh, you gotta have rain. So every day that it rains, it's kind of a blessing to us. And I like to capture sometimes the intensity of a rain day. And they're actually quite beautiful to me. And then kind of finishing, we have another beautiful sunset. And then this one is an actual, uh, just absolute love of all the color that you see in a very abstract piece um, that captures all the tones as they go down into a melting sunset. And then from the larger paintings, we're gonna conclude with this one. And this is something that happens if you're out in the hill country, you will see this. We have canyons all around uh, our ranch house. And some days because of just the right weather conditions, there'll be a fog that sits in those canyons and it just, and I call it the fog lingers in the canyon. So as the sun was rising, the fog was just kind of sitting there uh, with a very slight glow in the canyon from the sunlight coming up through it. So that's another beautiful big piece that I'm excited about that's new, brand new. Um, and then last, let's have fun with these. Um, sometimes, you know, I just have a good time taking a tiny canvas and seeing what I could pack inside it. And so I talked to the people who framed my work and they said, we can frame those little ones for you. And I said, well, how fun. So I call these my jewel box collection. And I've sold a lot of these. People like them for gifts, for client gifts, even just to put on a desk and uh, just a small remembrance of, of some of my work. And they're all signed on the back, just like the big ones. I don't sign my paintings on the front unless someone asks me to do it because um, I, I don't want anything to disturb that, that sunset, that look, the feel. So even the signature would be a bit disturbing to me. So they're all signed on the back. Uh, this is an interesting little piece because this was the recent phenomenon of how Saturn and Jupiter lined up. And I was literally watching this and could see the rings of Saturn and the bright intensity of the Jupiter planet behind it and that orangey red tone. And so I had to capture this. Uh, again, it was just something that we'll never see again in our lifetimes. So there it is on a small little place. So anyway, these are fun. And again, we've had a lot of fun with trying to capture a big painting in a small space. And these were tiny.